at the Emerging trial. now is John Longworth. John? Uh, coming on. John, could we talk to you real This is John Longworth. This is Dion Longworth's uh, father stepping up to the podium. John, what was, the, what was that like to hear guilty 53 times inside? It didn't change anything. It, it means he won't hurt anybody else outside of prison, but uh, uh, Dion and Jennifer are still not with me. Um, so it's always, to me, it's sad to see anybody throw away their life. So this is a person who's basically thrown away his life, and that's sad. So uh, to me, that just adds sadness to the sadness. But uh, I guess I, some people should think I, I would be happy about it. But but uh, maybe maybe I just that's the way I think. I don't um, I don't know. What uh, emotions are you feeling right now, John? I'm still I'm sad. It's. Sentencing somebody to prison or anything is not anything to be happy about to me. Um, especially when uh, what I would really like is to give Dion and Jennifer a hugs, and that's not going to happen. So, uh, Do you think you'll find a, uh, a way eventually to forgive uh, Forgiving means you say what he did was okay in, in some respects, so I can't do that. I do have to let go of it every day. I've been letting go of it several times a day now for for like 33 months. So uh, in order to live and get through each day, you let go of things. And uh, I go by a teaching that uh, Jesus taught where he said you don't just forgive seven times, you forgive 70 times seven, which means it happens over and over again. But if anybody thinks that means I I say what he did was okay, or or that let's let bygones be bygones. I can't do that, but I I do know that I have to let go of it and move on, uh, as my son Dion would do. Uh, I would do, and that's if I had the opportunity to to lend him a hand, I probably would. Uh, but uh, that's just not. I don't know that I'd have any opportunity for that. So we'll see what comes in the future. John, what would you like to say to the first responders who were there on the scene that night? Well, I've already said that. <laughs> I, I've, thank you, and uh, I'm so glad that they were with him. Uh, the uh, Hollingsworths, and uh, I don't know why I can't remember the name of the policeman that was there was a policeman that was off duty that was there. I, he lives in the neighborhood, and I just can't remember his name ever. But it's uh, there were so many first responders yeah, and there, neighbors who were trying. Well, to there save. yeah, there were 15 to 20 people who were there, and I thank all of them for trying. And uh, there were neighbors that would have tr helped if they hadn't been in shock. Um, so many of the people, like th the people that lived next door. They were in such shock that it took them hours to get back to where they had any sense, it seems. So uh, it was uh, devastating for the neighborhood. There were so many people that suffered. And it's not, not just us. Uh, we lost two loved ones. But I, I would imagine if you're trying to save somebody and you can't do it, that that would be awfully frustrating. And so I know these those people, uh, the neighbors, the firemen, the policemen, everybody that was involved. Uh, the first ambulance on the scene in the crew was the wife of Dion's best friend, which is something not very many people know about him. But uh, I, they, they didn't come to the trial because it would have been so hard on them. But uh, to drive up next to your next to your best friend's house and uh, see that it's collapsed and there's nothing you can do about it would have to be awfully hard. So there, this has affected thousands of people. 
I suspect it's affected the news media and everybody in a lot of ways that haven't been very pleasant. And this is the first step in getting past it, but I hope that we do get past it and look for things, things that we can do better, ways we can improve uh, everything that we do. And that's what I hope my work will be, is helping to make Indianapolis a better place and uh, going on. And John, there are other co-conspirators, other trials, so this will continue. Will you continue to be at those trials? I'm not going to attend every day. I can't see doing that. It was very painful. Um, okay. When you see a, somebody who's been a fireman for 31 years and he, he looks like he could tear a house down with his bare hands and, he, and he's sitting up there choking back tears to go through testimony. Um, and then uh, every couple of days, or every, there for a while, it was every day there was somebody that was involved with Dion's rescue or attempted rescue. And that was very, very difficult. And uh, I don't know that I want to go through all of that again. Um, so I'll, I'll be at some days, but I can't see going to every day. It makes it very inconvenient when they move it so far away from home that you have to leave your job and everything. and, and uh, I uh, was just blessed with the time that I could come up here and a great bunch of co-workers and all that are helping helping me to be able to be here. But I, I just can't see being doing it again. Doing it again uh, would be harder on a lot of people and it needs to be in it. And it, it is painful, so I just don't want to go through it again. I, I, have, I, I get adrenaline rushes, and so every day I was on adrenaline all day long, and I wouldn't be off of the adrenaline until after the next day, and so <laughs> it's, I just don't think I, I want to do that again day after day. John Longworth, thank you so much for talking to me. John Longworth is the uh, father of Dion Longworth. And